Okay, well, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us on this rainy night. Maybe some of your sessions have been canceled um, or you're free to join us with our special guest, Christine Lilly. I just wanted to welcome everyone. My name is Dr. Dina Gentili and I'm the president of the New England Impact MPL League. And I'm fortunate to be um, here tonight to kind of greet you and also share a little bit more about what Impact is all about. I just wanted to give a shout out really to our clubs that are part of Impact. We do, we are a club based league. One of the special things about Impact is that we share our resources. So everything that we do really is for all of the clubs um, under our umbrella and for all of our players. And really the outreach goes to families as well. So here are some of the clubs that are part of the New England Impact MPL. We invited guests this uh, tonight. So it would be great if during the presentation uh, for any non-impact players, if you wanted to add which club and team you play for in the chat, it would be nice to monitor who's joining us. And we hope that you enjoy our, our presentation tonight. I just wanted to also share our core values. So for the New England Impact, we came up with four core values when we started our season uh, last spring. And these are four elements. They're truly the fundamental of, of what we do on and off the field. Um, so tonight with our guest, Christine Lilly, I, I really do hope that you kind of get a sense of, of her legacy that she's bringing here tonight. Everything that she talks about is, is truly historic. Um, she's part of the foundation of women's soccer in this country. And all of the outreach that she's doing with her camps, um, joining us tonight, um, and also her book really are part of her legacy. And I'd like to think that we're, we're really part of everything that she's doing in her journey as she continues her career with the things that she's doing uh, with players on the field and off the field. Um, one of the things that we also embrace as a league is we've kind of adopted the mantra more than a league. So we do a lot of college programming with our players. Even our youngest players are initiated quite early in understanding the college pathway. Whether you're going to play college soccer or not, our hope is that everyone has an aspiration to study at the highest level. And we are building programming to help with um, academic programming. We also did a LinkedIn session to help build resumes and create networks. Even if you're in middle school or high school and you might not have a LinkedIn page, we still wanted to talk about the importance of, of getting out there and meeting as many people as possible, either through volunteer activities or clubs and activities at your school. And we spend a lot of time with off the field learning and our Zooms are, are a large part of what we, we do. Um, so we bring in guest speakers, panels of coaches at the collegiate level. Um, we've had experts in sports psychology. We've had high school coaches join us. And all of these resources really funnel down to the players. And ultimately, our goal is to help our young players develop into leaders on the field and leaders off the field. So that brings us to our guest tonight, Christine Lilly, who I had the pleasure of, of watching in person live as a professional player. She played for the Boston Breakers. I've watched her play. Um, at the United States national team level. She's legendary. Um, she, her book, Powerhouse, also is truly instrumental for understanding what it's like to be part of a team. We all want to be on a team, but the responsibility of being part of a team and how to be a good teammate and be a good leader and do both of those at the same time are really important in, in our development. So, what I would like to do is pass the Zoom microphone over to Christine Lilly. And if you have any questions during the presentation, you can add them to the chat. Christine uh, has joined us uh, before. We actually had an Impact Book Club and Powerhouse was our book of choice. So for the players who had the opportunity to read the book, uh, let's hope you can engage a little bit more with, with Christine. But any questions, please add them to the chat or I know Christine will open up uh, the, the Zoom for questions as well. So Christine, Lily, thank you so much for joining us and I'll let you take over. Thank you, Dina. Hi guys, how's everyone doing? Give me a thumbs up in your 
Yeah, look at that. I like that. Look at all these people. This is great, you guys. Oh, that's all the faces. Um, for those of you that can't see faces, hello, everybody. Um, like Tina said, I was a part of um, a Zoom call. I don't know how long ago. How long ago was that? That was in the spring. Yeah, that was, was in the spring, spring. That long? Yes. Yes. Wow. All right, and it was great. And any opportunity that that I can to reach an audience like you guys, young young soccer players, young girls, and share a little bit of my experience and my time on the national team and some of my philosophies and thoughts about being part of a team, um, I get excited about. Because when I was your guys' age, and I'm looking around at these faces, um, there weren't a lot of females that were <laughs> that would could talk to me like this. You know, we, there was all all that we saw on TV when I was growing up were men playing different sports, which I enjoyed watching. There was nothing wrong with it, but there wasn't females. So the fact that you guys have so many role models now, uh, especially this current U.S. Women's National Team, um, is so great. Uh, so just a little bit. Let me give you a little background of my time because I know. None of you ever saw me play because you're way too young. <laughs> but I did play uh, soccer on the national team. I played for the U.S. team for 23 years. So right now, Carly Lloyd is getting ready to play her last game tomorrow. And she's had a 16-year career, I think. Um, so she's ending a wonderful career. So um, I was fortunate to play for 23 years on the team. I played in five World Cups uh, and won two of them. And then I played in three Olympic Games, and I won two gold medals and one silver in there. And all that stuff is amazing. And it was so great to be a part of all those big events. But when I really look back and when people ask me, you know, what, what do you remember? What, what do you miss most about the national team? It's mainly my teammates. Um, and a lot of the things that I do miss is the locker room stuff, maybe for you guys, the bus trips, or just, you know, in between games, sitting around and chatting um, or texting on the phone, one or the other, but connecting. And those are the things that I really was grateful for, for the national team. Um, when I made the team, when I was 16, anybody 16 here? No, not in this group that I can see. Okay. So when I was 16, I made the national team and I was really nervous and I was really excited and I really didn't know what I was getting myself into. And when I joined the team, my first trip was to China. And I had to think about it for a moment where that was. And I was like, oh my gosh, where's China? And I grew up in a small uh, town in Connecticut. So it was a whole new world. But when I made that team, it changed my life. And not just changed my life because I was on the US team and you know representing my country. It changed my life because I was now around people that were like me. So like I talked in the beginning, I said, you know, when I was younger, there was only male players playing different sports. So when I joined the national team, I finally was surrounded by other women that were like me, that wanted to work hard, that wanted to get dirty, get sweaty, wanted to win, wanted to rip teams heads apart while we played. We really wanted to win. And that was so refreshing to see because I, for so long I was trying to fit in with players that didn't have the same mentality to me. So that changed my life in that aspect that there were people like me and it was so comforting. And then in that process of being on the national team for 23 years, I grew with the game, I grew up with the game and I grew the game. And these teammates taught me so much about life. They taught me about what it means to be a good teammate. And I think um, some of you guys may know what it, what it means to be a good teammate. Can any of you, if you unmute yourself, for those of you that I see your faces, or raise your hand or something. Maybe someone give me an example. Of what, what would be something that um, would be a good teammate? What makes a good teammate? Anyone? All right, Cassandra over here. I see you. Go ahead, hon. Um, something that makes a good teammate is whenever you lose, you just cheer your teammates on and say, just keep going. We can get better. Yeah, so support. I like it. That was excellent. Anyone else want to share? Come on, there's not really a wrong answer with this, girls. Yes, Lori, I see you right there, hon. Uh, you're gonna need to unmute yourself for that, sweetie. Oh, well, maybe we'll try another, because I don't hear Lori. Yeah, Lori can't unmute right now for some reason. Oh, okay. All right, well, Lori, we'll come back to you. Uh, dose. Your name is D-O-U-C-E-T-K. Being a good listener. A good listener, yes. Yeah, good listener. Communication, I like that. Good. Anyone else? Come on, some braves. Oh, Lily down here. Go ahead, Lily. 
Good sportsmanship. Good. What would be good sportsmanship? Give me an example. Like, say there was a PK and mm -hmm. like you missed it, like, and your team is like, "Get you'll get it next time." It happens. Everyone goes through it. It's like you're almost like supporting your team. Yep. Good. I like it. That's great. Good one. Anyone else? Nicole Ireland over here. You got a Berkey uh, t-shirt on. I love it. You got any ideas? Give me one. I know you know what it means to be a good teammate. Share one with me. Um, well, being like a good teammate's kind of like you always want to like keep on going and like always be like helpful for like with like moving the ball. Yes, I love it. Great. Alex up top. Capuano. Um, showing up to games and practices. Yes, yeah, showing up. I like it. Yes. Lisa's iPhone. Kind of like what Alex just said, like being committed to your team and being a good teammate. Yes, I like that. Being committed. Yes, that, that is excellent. Um, Mala, Mala, Rizzo? Um, it's Miley. And, Sorry, Miley. I um, apologize. And um, being like giving positive feedback to your teammates is really important and not just like yelling at them when they make a mistake. Yes, excellent. Being, yes, these are all good examples. Liliana, you have another one, hon? Being there for them. Being there for them, yes, good. Yes, all those, oh, Gabby, sorry, I missed you, Gabby. Like, like helping your teammates, like when they're down, like emotionally and like mentally. Yes, all that. So, I mean, you guys already know, and I think um, what also you know is the things you feel throughout game and practices. So. I always like to share a story. It's like one of those um, examples when, you know, people are like, well, what does it mean to be a good teammate? It's kind of the one, one of these stories where, hey, you're sitting on the bench, you're getting ready to go out to practice on the field and everyone's putting their cleats on and the shin guards and you see one of your teammates go and she forgets her shin guards. And a good teammate, a not good teammate would be like, oh, let's hide them and let's see if she's gonna get in trouble. Or a good teammate goes over and brings the shin guards and says, hey, quick, put these on before coach sees you so you don't get in trouble. Those are the kind of things you wanna do. You wanna make your teammates look good. And I, I bring this example too, saying you make your teammates look good. Because one of my um, teammates back in the day, uh, Kate Saburo, Mark Graff, um, she's actually the general manager of the national, women's national team right now. Um, she once told me that um, she played behind me. She was left defender sometimes um, in her career. And she gave me a compliment once. And what it was, was basically, you make your teammates better around you. And when someone tells me that, that was kind of like, wow, okay, that's a really cool compliment. Because that means I'm doing something right. Because you know what, girls, we're not perfect, right? We're not going to make always make the perfect pass. We're not going to always um, you know, run the right way. We're not going to, you know, always hit the face of the goal could go over, but we're going to do our best to make it better. So if a teammate passes you a ball, Maddie, I'm looking at you, Maddie, I see you. And it's going towards your neck. You basically could be like, ah, oh, and it goes out of bounds. And you're like, well, that wasn't my, that was, that was a terrible pass. Or you could try to take it off your neck, trap it, bring it down, and then continue to play and look like it never happened. And those are the kind of things that you do um, on the field to make your teammates better, to be a good teammate. Because you know what that also builds from your teammates? Anyone figured out what that builds? Yes, Cassandra. Trust and yes. they can like know you're trying to do something even though it really didn't work. Yes, trust, trust. One of the things too that my when I talk in my book, um, about is trust, trust and respect. If you have trust and respect for each other, many great things can happen. Many great things. Think about the people that you trust, your best friend that you tell a secret to, and you say, don't tell anyone. You trust them that they're gonna keep that secret, right? And when that trust is broken, it's hard to, um, to win it back, right? Yeah, so you wanna make sure you have that trust. So all this stuff, when, by making a, um, your teammates better and being a good teammate, builds the trust. And if you build the trust amongst a unit of say 18 to 21 players on your team, that makes you guys so incredibly strong. And my, my team for the 1999 World Cup, when we won that World Cup, um, had so much trust and respect. 
And that's why we're able to do so many wonderful things on the field and so many wonderful things off the field. Um, not only trying to be the best on the field, but we're also trying to make an impact um, in young girls' lives like yourself and also um, just growing the game off the field. So all these elements are so really important um, in the game. And the other area, when I played on the national team that helped build trust and respect was fitness. Do you guys like doing a lot of running? Probably, yeah, a little bit. Well, we did a lot of fitness. So we would do these little, I'll give you an example of one of them, full field sprints. So 120, so the, you know, the soccer field is 120 yards long, right? So we would have to do a full field sprint in 16 seconds. Then we had a jog back in 30, we rested 30 and then we did it again 10 times. So not very easy, right? But doing that together as a team built respect. Because if you knew everyone was working right next to you as just as hard as you were, you, you knew that they were gonna bust their butt uh, and get through this fitness. You knew when the game came around that you could rely on them. And that's one of the big things for our national team where the fitness tests were almost more, more about building trust and more about being fit. And um, it's one of the elements of practices that I really liked because it brought our team together. Um, and also I was, I enjoyed running. If you can really imagine to enjoy running. <laughs> I did, I liked it. Um, so all these things are part of the structure to be a, a great team. And obviously the elements of the game, passing, dribbling, the skills, that has to be there. And that, that goes on your time, on your responsibility as players to build that up and build the trust in your teammates that are taking care of being able to be a good passer, a good uh, skills on the ball, a good shot, a good defender, a good goalkeeper. Any goalkeepers out here for me? Um, oh, there we are. Oh, Sephora, you and uh, oh, Teresa up top, good. So, you know, all these elements that you have to take responsibility as individuals to do the skills on the field. You do that and you bring that to the team and then we build that team together. Um, so in that kind of aspect of being a good teammate and doing things to build that trust and respect um, are, is not easy. It's not easy at all. It takes effort and it takes work. And if you're willing to put that work in and that effort in, then your team is gonna pay off. And that's all the teams that um, that I was a part of that had success, had all those elements of people putting the time in, respecting each other, trusting each other, doing the hard work, making each other look good, playing for each other, helping each other, all the things you guys talked about when I asked you about being a teammate. And that's the stuff that makes great teams. And that's the stuff you don't necessarily always hear about on ESPN or on social media. You, you, you know, you hear about like, oh, this great goal or this, that, but a lot of the hard work is done behind the scenes and within the team. And those elements is really what matters in the end. Because if you're gonna be a good player and a good teammate on the field, guess what? Guess how that's gonna transfer off the field? Pretty good, right? Yeah, and that's really the goal, I think of what you guys are part of with Impact is not only to be great players, but also great people. And um, I was fortunate to have so many wonderful people as teammates um, and to this day, you know, we're all on a text chain together whenever we need something or it was just one of our teammates birthdays and everyone's wishing each other a happy birthday. And these are the kind of things that keep you together and uh, keep you smiling. Right, Sephora? I see your smile. <laughs> um, so that's a little bit. I really, I wanna see, I wanna open up a bit because I like hearing your guys' comments and I like hearing what you have to share and more of an interaction um, between us than just a lecture by me about teamwork. Um, but if there's any other qu uh, questions about this, that on this topic that you wanna ask me, we can do that and then we can just start into another aspect of maybe one of the, um, one of the chapters in my book that talks about how to build great team, team teams. So we can go from there. Cassandra, do you have a question, hon? Yes. Um... My question is, how did you re when you won and how did you react when you lost? Oh, that's a good question. Well, when I won games, I think you were pretty happy. And um, when we run the big events like the World Cup and the Olympics, we were uh, 
really happy because it's one of those moments where you've been training not only just for those games, but for your whole life. Because when I was like 10 years old, my goal was to be in the Olympics. Um, and when you, when we were there in 1996 and I won a gold medal, I was just so happy, happy that I won, but I was, it's been that dream of mine for so long. So that, um, that joy was just, you know, eluding out, excluding out of me. I was so, I couldn't keep it. I couldn't keep the happiness inside. But also when you lose, that same feelings come out, but just different. You know, keeping your um, sadness in is not easy either. And I can tell you, I'll tell you a story about my, um, one of my hardest losses I had uh, in my national team career. It was in the 2000 Olympics. We were playing in Sydney, Australia. And we played uh, Norway in the final. And it was one of those games that the first half, our team, we should have been up like four nothing. We had these opportunities and we had all these chances and we just couldn't do it. So I think it maybe it was, uh, I don't even know, one, one and a half, I think. And then we go to the second half and I think we go up to one, they tie it up. Um, and then I don't know if it ended up three, two. I see my brain, this is happens when you get older. Anyway, it was tied up and they were actually, they were up uh, by one and we had literally like a minute left of the game and I remember um a ball was played to our midfield our midfield was played out wide to Mia Mia Ham ever heard of her yeah she was okay um she 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 got it out wide she put this cross in the air and our shortest player on our team Tiffany Milbert I'm I'm 5'4 Tiffany Milbert's probably 5'2 she jumps up and she heads it in and ties the game up so we're going nuts and this is the regulars and then the whistle blows and that's regulation. So we go into overtime and this is in the Olympics. So there's 2000 Olympics. And so at this time in the Olympics, they had golden goal. So it wasn't two 15 minute periods you had to play. Whoever scored, the game was over. So we go into overtime and we're thinking we've got this, you know, we tie up the game in the last minute, we're going to win this thing. So we're playing the game and uh, a ball served to our defender, Joy. She heads it and then it hits the Norwegian player and she takes a touch and I'm watching it. And she, if she's in front of me, if she's the screen where I'm looking at, I see her shoot. And when I see her shoot, I see that it's going to go past our goalkeeper. And as I watch it go in the net, my heart breaks. And I was like, oh my, and my head just went down. And I had the worst pain I felt my life <laughs> because my dream just got crushed. And I mean, there was tears. So, cause you're asking how, I mean, on the wind, you're happy, you're smiling, you're, you're, uh, you're hugging, you're, you know, just so excited. And then on the reverse side, the pain and the sadness. So tears were there, you know, hugs were still there because you hug people for support and happiness and sadness and um, disappointment. And to finish the story, my parents were there. And after the, the game, we had to get cleaned up and we had to go into the locker room to put on our award jackets um, to go out for the ceremony to, for the gold medal, silver and the bronze. So we put our jackets on and we went out to the podium and the gold, gold medal was on a higher platform than the silver and then the bronze is on lower. And I remember standing on the podium and where we were looking out into the crowd, my, my family was over to the left. And it, it took me forever to look over there. And I remember just standing there. I'm like, don't look over because I, I thought my parents were going to be disappointed because we lost. I, I thought I was like, I was so disappointed. I'm like, oh my God, I traveled all this way and we lost. So finally, and I get choked up even thinking about this moment. Finally, I was standing there and I'm like, I finally look over to my mom and dad and they were like clapping and they're waving and they were smiling. Um, and I get choked up. I mean, it's about, this, that was like 30 years ago, <laughs> but inside me, I thought I let my parents down, but you know what, you guys, you never let your parents down. They're proud of you guys, no matter what, stepping out on the soccer field, um, going to school, doing your work, anything that you love to do, even if you're not always successful in the end, they're so proud of you. And that was the lesson I got from that loss, Cassandra, even though I was sad and heard and, and disappointed, my parents were still proud. And that, uh, that helped me sort of have a smile on my face. <laughs> Not really, but uh, made me feel a little less painful. So in the game, you win some, you lose some, you got to handle it 
with uh, you got to handle it well, and you have to be a good uh, good sport. Uh, shaking hands, yes, you can be sad, and yes, you could be hurt and um, down, but still find that to keep your chin up and know that your parents are still proud of you and your teammates still are proud of of the effort you guys had. Anyone else have a question? Maddie down here, I see you, hon. Um, did that like inspire you to um, do more soccer so you could like like get a win? Yes, it did. And that's so funny that you say, anytime a loss comes, I feel like the losses, I remember a little bit more than the win sometimes because the pain, in mind of our, our teammates, I remember when we lose, we were saying, we don't like to feel this pain. The, the, what we like to feel is the winning feeling. So we'd always want to try to do that. So after a game like that, um, you know, we had to regroup and we'd have some downtime, but then we'd be so excited to get back to training to see what we could do better, to see how we could come better as a team and make sure we have a win the next time we step out of the field. So definitely a big motivation um, and, and then come together as a team kind of thing um, to be better. I think um, Michael up in this corner, I know that's not your name, but it might be your dad's name. <laughs> yes. Do you have a sports card? Did one, hun? Do you have a sports card? Do I have a sports card? I, I have a player card. Yeah, I do. I did have a sports card when I played. They had uh, cool little player cards. I have one in my, yeah, I'll show you. Hold on. So I have my little room back here that has some of my stuff. So here's, you see that? It's kind of glare, but that was one of a sports card they had. How do you get one? Well, I don't know. You gotta be on the national team maybe, I don't know. <laughs> um, well, they made these ones, uh, they licensed them and they, uh, they, sold, they sold them. But I also have a player card where I sign autographs for kids at my camps. Maybe Charlotte, you got one of those team first ones, right? Uh, but it's pretty cool to have. I remember collecting baseball cards when I was a kid. So I was like, oh, I got a card. That's cool. Anyone else have one? Yeah, Charlotte, go ahead, hon. Have you always been a midfielder? Um, majority of my career, I played midfield, mainly left midfield, but I also played in the center when we played a 4-3-3. So like three, four defenders, three midfielders. I played a lot of attacking mid. Um, in college, I played striker a lot uh, on the national team. I'm a lefty, so uh, there's not many. Le any lefties out here? Oh, Sephora, yes. Anyone else? Uh, Reese, I see you good. All right, a couple lefties. So there's, oh, and Lori. Oh, I lost you. Where'd you go? Um, I think I saw your hand up. Um, so there's not many of us out there. So I played on the left side and um, loved it. And when I was younger, though, like you guys, or even younger than you, I used to practice my right foot all the time. I mean, my left foot, sorry. I was a righty and I used to practice my left foot all the time. And my dad used to tell me all the time, go to your left, go to your left, because I would always go to my right. Um, and then I started to do that. So then I would became better with my left foot. We got Mora over here. You have a question? Um, how can you like still like support your team even when you're hurt because I actually fractured my wrist today so oh no uh well yeah. that's good that well you know what you can do you I mean when you feel ready for it you can come to practice and be a good support on the side um I mean whenever you're at the games you're just the you know the positive on the bench you got this guys we can do this you're doing great all those kind of comments are so important yeah. Uh, even when you're hurt. And I'll tell you a story about, so have you guys ever heard of Julie Foudy? I know you probably have. Yes. Well, she was on the national team, but she's also a commentator. She does all, a lot of the U.S. women's games for ESPN. And she does the Olympics, a lot of features. Anyway, she was our captain. So in the 2000, what Olympics was this? Uh, 2004 Olympics in Greece. She was our captain. She got hurt in, in our game. And Julie doesn't really get hurt that often. And she had to come out and that's not like her. Um, but when she was out, Moira, she, all she could do from the sideline was, was yell. And Julie's 
really not a quiet person. So it was, it was actually very fitting for her. She was on the sideline and she was just yelling with us. We had, we were playing Germany and we we're um, in extra time. We we're up to one. And all I could hear from on the sideline is from Julie is like, you guys look strong because we used to do this fitness back to the fitness stuff. And we'd always yell to each other. We were strong. You guys were so strong. We're stronger than anybody. And I remember on the sideline with her hobbling on her little one foot because her ankle was hurt. She was just like, you look strong. And all I could think was like, yes, Jules, I feel strong. So little you know, your voice makes a difference, Moira, even when you're hurt. So you keep being a positive force for your teammates, all right, until you get that wrist better. Um, we got uh, Liliana. Thank what, you. What inspired you to play soccer? Uh, what inspired him to play soccer? My older brother, my brother, Scott, he's four years older than me and whatever he did, I wanted to do. He played baseball. I played baseball. He played soccer. I played soccer. We played football in the backyard. I played football in the backyard. So he was my first um, example of the game. And then there's a player called Pele. You guys know who Pele is? He's kind of like the Messi and Ronaldo of, the, of your time. Pele is the best, one of the best soccer players ever. And when I was growing up, he was the only soccer player I knew of. Um, and uh, he was uh, someone that I looked up to to watch play. And that helped me love the game too. All right, we got Gabby. You got a, you got a question, hon? Yeah. Um, what's your favorite thing about like soccer in general? My favorite thing about soccer? Um, well, I'll tell you when I was six to about 14, my favorite thing about soccer were the orange slices at halftime. <laughs> really, I loved them. Um, and then my teammates, I loved, I loved, I love being part of a team. I love being on the field with them. I love shooting. I love scoring. Um, but pretty much being part of a team is, is really what I love about the game. Uh, Lori. Did you win the Germany game? We did. Sorry, I didn't even tell you that. Yes, we so we end up so we end up overtime. We win the Germany game and then we go to play to Brazil in the final of the 2004 Olympics. And that game goes to overtime and guess who won that? We won that one too, 2-1. Two, one. And that was the last time me, Julie Fowdy, Mia Ham and Joy Fawcett played together. So it was a wonderful wonderful win and a good happy feeling. All right, Molly, Molly L, you have a, your hands up. Um, so you said like after you um, lost that game, like your next goal was to like win. Mm -hmm. What was your goal after like you won your next game? To keep winning and to keep getting better. And I think, you know, they're, the U.S. national team has been so successful and, and we've won a lot. And people are like, what else do you want to do? And I was like, well, I want to keep winning. And cause like the question before is like, how did you, how do you feel when you win, when you win, you lose, you feel so much better when you win. So our goal as a team was always to be better, always to um, try to keep winning and be the best in the world at, at, at the game that we could be the best country. Always. We wanted all the teams to want to come after us and win. So after we won, after that loss, and then we probably lost, we brought, lost another one in there and we had to come back and try to win another one. So it's a constant ebb and flow and a constant desire to try to be better each time you step on a field. Um, Teresa, I see your regular hand up. There you are. So um, I read Alex Morgan's book um, and she was like saying that she was, um, uh she, like she really like was your fan um and then she says like something about getting your number so like did you see her sometime when she <laughs> asked you uh, yeah so that's cute alex um my kids have all read all of her her books and then the kick books and yeah she said she was a fan of mine and you know when we when we retire from the national team you you know the numbers are passed down and um i think alex you know whether it was her choice to have 13, I don't know if there was another number she wanted more, but she ended up getting mine. And um, she's done such a great job wearing that number, hasn't she? She's done really good. So I'm so proud of, of her as a player and her person and what she's done for the game. So I'm happy that we both can share that number. 
uh, Jocelyn. Did you grow up? Did you grow up watching soccer? You know, I didn't. You know, I grew up watching baseball and football. Um, there wasn't much soccer on TV when I was growing up. I know it's hard to believe for you guys, but they did have the Cosmos, which was in a, a a pro league they had for men when the, when that was starting up before they had the MLS. And uh, I used to go watch the games there, but um, there wasn't a lot of soccer going on. So I didn't watch a lot of it growing up. All right, we have Zach. Do you play any other sports, sports besides soccer? Yes, great question. I, when I was all the way through high school, played soccer, softball and basketball all in high school and then when I was younger played hardball baseball basketball like I said football in the backyard so I'm a huge proponent of many sports I think it's I think they all help you become better in whatever cho what you choose and also think it's a good balance um, trying different things uh, meeting new friends um, doing other sports so I, I, I really think, I know it's sometimes harder these days with the, the nature of the youth sports to, to fit them in, but if you're able to do other sports, give it a try um, because they do help. I mean, I played baseball a lot and when I try to coach kids and I see a ball come up to teach them how to head and eye it, if you play baseball, you learn how to move and eye the ball coming in. So all these sports do play a role in helping you be better at the one you're, one you're doing, so. Um, yeah, I love to play many sports. All right, how about uh, Olivia? This is six to eight. When did you first start playing soccer? Um, I first started playing soccer when I was six years old. And I think everyone starts now at like four or something. You guys are starting younger and younger. Um, all right, we'll look at Brooke and Olivia up there on that screen with your hand up. How many goals? Do you, I, I mean, um, well, well, medals, how many medals do you have and what other positions do you like to play? Yeah, well, I have um, two gold medals and a silver and then I won two World Cup gold medals. Um, and I have three third place medals for the World Cup. So I have those all, I have this little, little shelf that I keep a lot of stuff in. And other positions I like to play, I pretty much played the ones I liked. Left midfield, attacking mid attacking midfield is probably one of my favorite, just because you get the ball a lot. If you play on the left side, sometimes the ball doesn't come so much. So I like attacking mid and, and I like striker. Not real fond of goalkeeping. Sorry, Sephora and my other goalkeeper out there. Um, I'm not that brave. Um, and then defender, I. I wouldn't mind playing a little bit, maybe outside back would be something I'd give a try. No, Liliana, you don't think I should do outside back? <laughs> well, I'll do right. that because I'm not good at it. Oh, you're not? Oh. <laughs> well, I think you could be good at it. You got to keep working hard. That's all. All right. Let's see who has an ass. Well, we got Audrey Robach up there. Audrey, let's see. And Paige, I'll get to you, hon. Uh, when... Um, did you like start playing only soccer, like switch? To oh, um, when I went to college. And you know what, even in college, I, I wanted to play softball too. But I couldn't because I was on the national team then. So I couldn't really, I couldn't fit it in. So if I wasn't on the national team and I was playing soccer, I might have tried to play softball in college. Um, but not till then. So, you know, you guys, you guys are still young. So you have lots, of, lots of things that you can still try and do if, if that's what you want. And if you love soccer and just want to do soccer, I get it. Um, but follow what your heart is and give something else a little try. All right, where, where did, um, oh, Paige, there you are. Have you ever played center back before? You know, I had, not during my career, but now um, when I do camps, and um, I do them with Mia Ham and Tish, and we sometimes play pickup games, and sometimes I like to play center back then. <laughs> and I like to just play the ball up so I don't have to do all the running. And we get some young players on our team to do that work. So, but I think center back would be cool. Do you play center back? Yeah, I bet you're good at it, huh? Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. All right, uh, Jeff's iPhone, 6S. What college did you go to? Uh, oh, good question. Huh? I went to the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. Um, loved it. And let me tell you a little bit about college. 
I was really, really scared to go to college. I grew up in a small town in Connecticut and I was, um, I didn't want to leave home. I knew I needed to go to school and I wanted to go to school, but I was homesick. And for the first, I would say three months, I was, I cried a lot because I was homesick. But you know what helped me get through? Soccer. Going to practice, being around my teammates. They helped me get through. So that's also why it's so great to be part of a team. All right, who hasn't asked one yet that I've got? I got more. Lily Heckman. Lily, let me see what you got. What was the hardest injury you've had and how did you get through it? Yeah. You know, Lily, I've been pretty fortunate. I haven't had any major injuries. Knock on wood. Um, towards the end of my career, I had a, a little bit of back issues. So I had to do a lot of um, a lot of exercises before practice to loosen up and strengthen it so I wouldn't be in so much pain. Uh, so that's how I got through that. And um, and other times, you know, if I rolled my ankle, it would just be icing and taping it up. And obviously in the hard times, your teammates help you get through. And your family support is real important. How about um, Alex Capuano? I can't see you, but I see your name. Um, why did you pick number 13? <laughs> uh, that's a good question. You know, I was young, so I was 16, you know, when I made the team and I got stuck with it. I wish I had a better story for you, but it was one of those seniority things. I was the youngest and um, it was a choice. I don't even know what was left. And I was like, oh, 13 looks good. And uh, I've grown to love it so much. How about Cali Aztec? What do you got for me, Cali? Did your brother ever get as competitive as you did? Yes, very much so. He used to beat me up too. He likes to say that he taught me everything. <laughs> I'll give him a little credit. He may be tough though. He would literally, we'd wrestle and he would, he would never take it easy on me. So he always wanted to win. And one time as we, we got older and I started getting better at soccer, I think I was in high school and we were, he was in college. And I had this big soccer goal that the, um, our park and recreation would drop off in the off season in my backyard. I had a big enough yard for it. And we had a contest to see who could hit the upper 90 on free kicks. Um, and I won and he was so mad. <laughs> so we were very did competitive. Ever get, Go ahead. Did he ever get like professional in any sports? Uh, no, he went to, he played baseball and soccer in college though. So that was pretty cool. Um, how about uh, Paige Olson? Who is your best friend on the team? Who is my best friend on the team? Well, there's a lot of girls um, that uh, to this day that I mean, everyone I could still count on. But I think, you know, you always have your friends that you a little closer with. Um, Mia Hamm was, Tish Venturini, Julie Foudy, Carla Overbeck. Um, Brandy Chastain, and then some of the current players that you might know that I knew. Uh, do you guys know Abby Wambach? I hung out with her a bit, and yeah. Christy Rampone, Carly Lloyd, I played with a bunch. She's her and Alex are the, probably the last, and Megan Rapino are the last three I think that I played with that are still playing. So they're all cool people. Um, there we had a great, a great group of women that were competing on the national team. So I had a lot of cool friends. All right, let's see. Um, Chloe Gokozio. Did I say it right? It's Kojo. Kojo. <laughs> Around 14, what did your training look like? Uh, okay, so that's about freshman. Are you freshman in high school? No, almost. Eighth grade? Yeah. Well, like I said, I did other sports, so I didn't feel like I had to do any extra. When I was 14, I was a freshman and I still played three sports. So I wasn't doing, um, I was practicing every day for the sport I uh, was it season it was in. So if soccer was the fall, I practiced every day and we'd have games and then basketball season would come. And I did that. I did play a little bit more soccer all year. Not as much as is done these days, but we did some winter training and then I'd play some in the spring, um, but not a lot of extra training. If anything, I'd go in the backyard and juggle. Um, and my, I had a dog. My dog's name was Rusty. He was a golden retriever. And I would dribble around the yard and he was my, he was my hardest defender. So I, I did some of that. So a lot of the extra stuff I did would be on my own. All right, let's see. 
Aliza Canestraro. Oh no, you do you have a question? You don't have a question. I just thought maybe I'd say hi. Hi. <laughs> How about uh oh where the names keep moving off my oh Smittish. James Sendanker. Did I pronounce that right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you have a question? Why did you pick to why did you pick to be a soccer coach when you stopped playing like soccer? Oh, that's a good question. You know, the only uh there was two other things that I wanted to be. One of them was a veterinarian when I was younger. And um I think a lot too much extra schoolwork that was gonna be <laughs> had for me that I didn't um have time for while I was playing on the national team. And the other thing a photographer, which I do take tons of pictures. And if you come to my house, I have pictures of my kids and it's all over the place. Um, but then when I left the game, I still wanted to be a part of it somehow. And I couldn't play anymore. So I'm like, well, coaching is the best, you know, the closest thing to it. But you know what I love coaching the most? Young kids like you guys. This, this is the age I love the most to coach. So um, I coach my girls right now. So that's kind of funny. All right, how about okay, Kayla Schroeder? What inspires you to practice on your own? That's good. You know what does? Uh, first off, I, I love the game. Um, and I, when I was playing the game, no matter what it looked like, if I was with teammates or if I was on my own, it made me feel so good. So that was one thing that why I like to practice. And also I wanted to be better. And I knew that I didn't have to like do crazy, crazy practice, like ton of it. But I knew that when I did practice on my own, I felt good. And then I knew it was helping me better. And sometimes it was as simple as I said, just juggling in the yard. Or when I made the national team and I was training on my own, I would go to, we had this big field house in my high school. Um, and I would get a ball and I would just kick it against the wall with my laces like a hundred times with the inside of my foot. I'd work on turning, um, so different things like that. Um, but I just wanted to be better. And I, when I made the national team, I had to be, I had to be ready and played in. So that was also part of why I wanted to be on the national team. So that truly helped me with motivation as well. All right, who has an answer? Uh, Olivia Ancatel. What age was the most important to you? in soccer like playing in soccer playing in soccer um you know i don't know that's a really good question i think they all the age parts of it play a role in your development um and i think the really the the important part when i when i'm coaching kids and talking to kids is we want you guys to still want to play the game when you're in high school you know we don't want you to be so tired because of all the playing you've done so i really hope that um that you you guys reach the high school age and you still have the love of the game with you um and even after i mean i would love to have have you excited for the game even through college and after college and keep playing so i just think what's important is that you you love what you're doing and you don't do it to where you don't love it anymore and i think that's something we just want to have that love in inside you for the game for a long time all right, let's see who has an answer to that. I, Zach Davis, did you ask one already? Go ahead anyway. You got all those medals. What do you got going over there? Um, these are my medals that I have. Some of cool. them are from Hey, who's on your wall though? I see someone on your wall. That's Alex Morgan. Oh, the other 13, I see. Where's my big, where's my big head, big fat head? What do they call those fat heads? <laughs> Well, I think they're called, I don't know. Sure. But my question is, when you were little, um, what team did you play for? Oh, when I was little, what team did I play for? Well, I, I you know what team I play? I play with the boys. So from second grade to eighth grade, because remember I talked about that there wasn't a lot of girls playing soccer, right? I played with the boys. And my team, you know what my team name was? The Wilton Wonders. My town was Wilton and we were called the Wonders. And one of my teammates from that team is married to one of my best friends. So I still see him and we played soccer from second to eighth grade, Frank. And it was so much fun playing with the boys. Um, and so we were the what Wonders. How about hands, Malay, Rizzo. I know I said it wrong again. What is it? It's Miley. Miley, sorry. Um, 
how did you get recruited um like for the team and mm-hmm. how did you like did you go to college when you were 16 um okay good questions so when i went to college i i first graduated high school so i didn't go to college till i was um 18 when i graduated i think i was go i just turned 18 maybe or even 17 i don't know um i was 16 i was a junior so then yes it turns no i might just turn 18. so i went 18 college and then how i got recruited for the national team so back in the day before there was club soccer they had this uh, program called odp which they still have now if you guys are familiar with odp which um i think it was a great um avenue for how i did it you made your state team so i grew up in connecticut i made my state team and then from that state team, we went into a regional tournament where they had the East, South, uh, South and North and West. And they brought all those great players together. And from those um, different regions, they picked a team. And I got picked on it at this time. And Mia Hamm, Julie Fowdy, Joy Fawcett got picked. So the four of us were picked. And then that's when we joined the national team when we were 16. So it was kind of like you play for your area your state and your region and then they pick the national team now it's a little bit different um the way they do it but um because all the club system has created more opportunities for girls to play and ways for coaches to see players so if you if you do like odp and you were like picked for the regional team like for like that tournament thing and the games um and you're like still young like well like people from the u.s like like department and team like look at you still like at a young age yeah I think they probably have they have all these different scouts and I think now that we're on the on the national on the U.S. U.S. soccer federation they have team you have U14 you I mean they have different levels of teams that they bring players in to to see how they do you know so I think there's different levels that you can join the national teams if you get picked um, and then overall, I think the coaching staff has a bunch of scouts that are always looking for players, looking for the talent that, that deserve to be on that national team. So what's important is, you know, a lot of, a lot of kids are always like, oh, there's scouts here or this or that. No matter when you step on the soccer field, no matter who's there, what are you always going to give? So my Maddie, what are you going to give? You're going to give your best. Yes, your best, no matter what the situation is. So in the big picture, when you're worried about who's watching, don't worry about it because your your goal every time you step on the field is to do your best, right? And if you're worried about what you should focus on, I'd like to tell kids this, pick one or two things that you're good at. Know what your strengths are. It's not being cocky. You know what your strengths. My strengths was um, speed, fitness, and I was uh, good on the ball. So when it came around what I had to focus on, I was like, okay, if I'm crappy on my passes, I'm going to make sure I'm running up and down that field, you know, and then if I'm going to, if I'm going to get the ball, I'm going to make sure I'm going to make, you know, consecutive good passes. So maybe I'll make some short five yard passes to build my confidence up. So don't worry about who's out there watching. Just worry about just focus on a couple of things that you do well and, and do them well and do your best. Always just do your best. Because coaches are looking for players that are working hard. They're not looking for some flashy thing of this. They're looking for players that are going to work hard. They're going to look at the players that if there's a mistake made, are there, is there a head down or are they just getting right back up and playing? Those are the kind of things you need to do uh, as a player. All right, where are we? Let me see. I think we I have got... one more time for one more question. Oh, my gosh. It's almost 8 o'clock. I didn't even. Oh, my God. You guys are so fun to chat with. Oh, Jeff's iPhone. Juliana, unmute yourself. There you go. Um, what team did you um do you coach? What team did I coach? Um, right now I coach a, a Medfield Soccer Academy, which is um a team from my town. It's kind of like a small club team, and we I think, just oh, go ahead. I think I played your team. You did well. I was just when when what team are you on? First off, I'm on um the WFC, the okay. Women Club. Okay. And oh. I, th- um, I saw you when we were playing in the. I think it was the. In Needham. Okay, in the tournament. Yeah. In oh the- no way. That's all- okay. So now, what's your name again? Eliana. 
Eliana, now next time you see me, guess what you got to do? What? Come say hi. Because <laughs> we're, we're, we're connected right now. We're connected. Um, but yeah, yeah so I, I just, I coached the Medfield Soccer Academy, but we just partnered with South Shore Select. So we've partnered with a, a club to broaden our reach and, and be partners with them, which has been great. Um, and it's just so fun to, to be around this, the game and, and uh, watch all you guys play the game. Right? Tearing it up. We're stopping goals, Sephora. Right? Don't let those goals in their net. Well, I, I want to say thank you so much, Christine, for spending, uh, uh, you know, an hour with us. Really, this has been probably the most interactive session that we've had in all of our Zooms. And I really appreciate it. Um, you're a great friend to impact. You've been so generous with your time. Um, players, I'm really proud of each of you really for, there's a lot of chat going on and, and being brave and courageous to ask questions on Zoom. Really, that's great. And you should be proud of all of your efforts and all, all of your great questions. And just like Christine said, we're, we're all connected now. So whenever you see someone um, who's on this Zoom, a fellow uh, player, someone that you're gonna be competing against or a Christine Lilly, go up and say hi and just let her know, you know, I was on your session. I was at your Zoom. That goes a long way in just building more connections and making someone feel good. I thought you were excellent, Christine Lilly, tonight. Just really a Thank lot you. of information and being candid with us and open with us on your experiences has been has been great. Uh, players, let's give Christine a hand. Awesome. <laughs> the quiet guy. Oh, it's um, awesome. Well, it's so great. And I also, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate your faces and your names. I know some don't have the video on, but the next time if we do this, put that video on. It makes me so happy to see you guys and to see your names there so I can actually talk to you uh, makes it a nice interaction for me and hopefully for you guys too. But thank you, Dina, anytime you let me know when we got to do this again. Sounds great. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Thank you. It.